Alright, I'm back. Now I just gotta wrap this shit up. I'm using a walkthrough to assist me here, so I'll leave a link for it down in the description. Just go to the bottom of that walkthrough and it will tell you which colored cards came from certain parts of the game. Then you can go to the relevant section, such as the part for the main Carpe Retractum course, and just read through it to figure out where you may have missed something. Do you want to replay the Carpe Retractum channel? No, it would be cool to just change the control of characters at will so I can walk in those doors as Ron instead of Harry. Well, I'm not sure if I found everything last time. Explore the challenge thoroughly, Ron. Some of the best secrets are well hidden. Good luck. So, where is this thing? Oh, I had to look behind me. Of course. I guess I have no one to blame but myself when I look behind me in a lot of other places, though. Oh, that's nice, the pumpkin sort of landed on that miniature model of the Zerg-tainted Unimind. Wait, you gotta be shitting me. I missed that? How the fuck did I miss that? Let's look back at when I originally played through the lesson. Oh, well, it's not there now, but apparently I'm not a total idiot. Okay, here's what happened. According to the walkthrough, apparently that area opens up only after you've cast a pulse on all four suits of armor. And I didn't look up after doing that, because why would it occur to me to do that after seeing an empty wall from across a pit? But listen closely in this replay a few seconds after hitting the fourth suit of armor. You can hear the stone wall sliding away to reveal the hidden area, but... It's a very subtle noise. If you didn't hear it, here's the noise again. Well done, Ron. Well, that cutscene got cut short. Did I do that? There wasn't a skipping animation. You were brilliant, Ron. Shall we go then? You lead the way, Ron. So yeah, it's not that being able to change characters matters in this situation, of course. You still appear in the challenge as your respective character assigned to this lesson anyways, but it would still be cool when you're running around the rest of the castle freely and not forced to be Harry specifically, I guess. Welcome back, Hermione. So, you want to give it another try, then? Remember, you need all ten challenge shields to go to the Bean Bonus Room. Well, I already did that, and I can't be sent there twice from the same lesson. Where's the soft lap before his music? Okay, let's see... There it is! That's the chest I never accessed from last time. Eh. You know, I don't have to deal with these sentient piles of barf right now. Just move on and... I'm trying to remember... What exactly it is that I'm supposed to do? So I do the thing with the dragon, which doesn't help me figure this out, but I need to do it anyways to complete the level, and... Uh... Fuck it, I guess I'll take care of these prolapsed, diseased anuses. Did I defeat the second one without actually casting the spell? I don't know. Shit, you know what? I didn't memorize the part of the walkthrough properly that tells me what else to do, so I gotta stop and read it again. Oops. Alright, I'll stop here for a second. Oh, that's a nice camera view. Who doesn't like close-ups of flowers, though? Okay, so I don't blame myself for missing this the first time around. See that? It's a lock on the hedge. Christ. And there's the rabbit. From here, this should be pretty straightforward. Yep, just go in there and I should be able to open the gates. Very good. Once I get this, I'll be able to get that 75th card from Fred and George's shop. Alright, I'm out of here. And I missed the tile somehow. Nicely done, Miss Granger. And her skirt shows through the robe. Nice. 
You've already completed the bean bonus room for this challenge. That's but what I said earlier. The challenge as many times as you like to make sure you've found all the collectibles and other secrets. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. Here she is. Where to then? You lead the way, Hermione. Yes, you lead the way, Hermione. But only for the first 10 meters or so. After that, I'm back in control. So yeah, back to the shop for the final time. You gotta get that last card. Star shop. Fortuna Major. After all this, I can't believe it's nearly over. A little sad, actually. Hi, Fred. Hi, George. Sure enough, it's Harry himself. I must say, that was pretty difficult to guess, though. Okay, I'll just check the card collection again, just to look at it and double check. Did the game just fucking freeze? Oh god, what? What happened? Oh, there it is. Did the audio stop? Oh, for fuck's sake, it tried to load a new map area while I tried to open the menu at the same time. How was I supposed to know it would do that? Lots of people will probably want to check out that last card when they get it. You could have triggered this being bonus room session for a little bit later, such as when you're leaving the shop. So yeah, this is the SPECIAL visit to the Bean Bonus Room with no time limit, and in addition to all the other items that you will LITERALLY NEVER NEED at this point in the game, there are five bonus cards to collect. So yeah, despite not needing any of these things except for the five cards in order to complete the third year requirements at the end, I'm still gonna run around like a greedy little shit and get everything anyways. Not only is it satisfying to get beans by flying through the air after jumping on a Spongify tile, it's even better getting collector's cards too at the peak of that trajectory. But seriously, other than getting the five bonus cards, what the hell is the point of this? You can never buy any other cards in the game because you can't get the 75th card without Harry on it until you get the previous 74 cards. And you can't get those 74 cards without first buying cards directly from students, Fred and George, or from any of those password-protected portraits where you need items to buy the password scrolls anyways. So, anything you could have possibly spent these items on needs to be bought before you can satisfy the requirement needed to unlock access to the special bean bonus room session, which just negates the whole thing. Sure, having the five bonus cards makes it not completely useless, but... It's not enough. Honestly, they should have either just had you figure out a different way of obtaining the five bonus cards, or just not even have them at all in the first place and make the 75th Harry Potter card the absolute last card in the game. Now we've been here long enough that the music had to restart itself. Nice. I see the final card down in that corridor, but I'll get this shit along here first. Even though I never cast a spell at that suit of armor, he flinched as if I did. I wonder if something exploded in the stomach. I guess something has to eject the beans out of him. There's the final card. Yep. Have I mentioned yet that even though this is the episode where I beat the game, that I have four more episodes following it? Yeah, apparently if you're determined enough, you can come up with at least another hour or hour and a half of things to show off. Just wait and see. Hopefully you'll find episode 18 interesting on its own, but it's nothing compared to episodes 19, 20, and 21. I guess that's nearly all of them. Wait, what the fuck? There's even more just spawning themselves now? Uh, and pumpkin pasties, too. Cauldron cakes. Yep, they were next. Good lord, look at all this. 
I'm not even sure what triggered this. It can't be merely getting every bean, because I've since spotted another one that I haven't gotten yet, so... My next best guess is that all this shit just falls from the ceiling the next time you walk into this main area after getting the 80th card, just to reward you for finally completing the card collection. A reward which, again, is completely useless at this point in the game. And now there's one more bean that I'm aware of. Here we go. Well, why the fuck can I get that last freckled bean? Although maybe I deserve it spending this much time getting one single low-value item that I already said we don't even need anymore at this point in the game. There, finally got the fucking thing. Maybe I have OCD and feel a need to get every little thing I see? I don't know. Yeah, it's just the four founders in Dumbledore. Fitting for bonus cards, I suppose. Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Yep, that's him, showing more emotion on his face on this paper card than he does throughout most of the video game. I'm pretty sure I got everything in here now. I'm not about to double check myself, though. Okay, now there's literally nothing left for me to do to beat the game other than talk to Dumbledore and get his confirmation that I completed my third year requirements. Then I can go home. Not that Harry would want to go back to the Dursleys anyways, mind you. Guess I should double check that I actually did everything. Where the fuck is it? Where's my list? Ah, here we go. Okay, good. Everything's done. But... I had the Marauders map this whole time? God damn it, I completely forgot. I never used it even once at any point in this game. I guess I never needed it very badly, but holy shit, it still could have been useful just to make sure I knew where I was going. I just winged it this entire time. Well done, all of you. You've completed your third year requirements. Splendid work. Absolutely splendid. You should all be very proud of yourselves. What you did for Sirius Black and Buckbeak... Professor McGonagall knows what happened with Sirius now, and Buckbeak? Do try and behave yourselves during the summer holidays. Another great camera shot. Let's show Professor McGonagall's back and obstruct the people she's talking to. As the Hogwarts Express carried him and his friends back to King's Cross Station, Harry recalled something Professor Dumbledore had said. You think the dead we loved ever truly leave us? You think that we don't recall them more clearly than ever in times of great trouble? Your father is alive in you, Harry, and shows himself most plainly when you have need of him. And here comes the credits music where I can summarize everything in a final conclusion. Overall, I love this game. Sure, I yell at it a lot, but that's for a comedic effect. There aren't any serious problems with it, although, to name a few minor ones, I mentioned that the game was too easy and talked about the chocolate frogs endlessly in that context. And perhaps an even bigger disappointment were the characters' facial expressions, but I'm not upset because they looked bad. I'm upset because they looked good but could have been used more often. Harry in particular looked quite bland throughout most of the game, even though there are plenty of examples of him looking happy, angry, sad, etc and some additional characters could have been added to the game too, such as Professor Snape, even if they didn't need to play a major role. But again, there aren't any really big problems with the PC version of the Prisoner of Azkaban game. I think for myself and a lot of other people, games like this have, if you'll forgive the phrasing, that magical quality about them that seems to create such a strong feeling of nostalgia later on in life. This game holds up quite well many years later, Every time I've decided to go back and play through it again, I've never regretted it. I've always had fun with it. The control is fluid and responsive, the graphics look good, the music and sound effects are great, and all these qualities combine together to create many satisfying moments such as defeating enemies or casting spells and watching the effects play out in front of your eyes and ears. The atmosphere of this game is amazing. The settings we find ourselves in, whether it's the main castle, its grounds, 
or the various areas that our lessons take place in are fun to explore and manipulate with Harry and his friends. Overall, it's a fantastic game.